men, if you want to be good fathers to your children, if you want to be good husbands to your wives, if you want to be the leaders that God made you to be, you follow David. And what did David do? He did what God told him to do. It didn't matter what the people said. It didn't matter what the, the circumstances were. When God gave him an order, David carried it out no matter what. And that doesn't mean he was perfect, and it doesn't mean that he didn't make a lot of screw-ups when it came to the rest of his life. But I think this is a very underrated story in the life of David, one that we don't talk about a whole lot. Hey, fellow tacticians. Be sure to like this video and subscribe and ring that little notification bell. That supports this channel's conservative content, which is good for me, good for you, good for America, but really bad for the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for The Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. Our Chaplain's Report this evening comes from the book of 1 Samuel. We're continuing our, our series there. And you may recall that in the story and the part of it that we're reading right now, that David has fled Saul for his life. Saul is coming after him. He's pursuing him. In the most recent chapter that we just read in Psalm 22, Saul killed a bunch of God's priests and an entire village just for helping David out. And so Saul is in legitimate fear of his life. Saul is willing to go to insane degrees to try to make sure that he kills David, including killing innocent people for the crime of just being kind to him and feeding him and, and helping him and his men out. And this is even crazier when you consider that David has expressed no interest in taking Saul's throne. He's expressed no interest in taking over the kingdom. He's not tried to do anything to Saul, not tried to injure him, even though Saul has, you know, he'd actually be justified in defending himself from Saul because Saul's already personally attacked him twice. And so all of this is going on, and David is running from Saul trying to just stay alive when a very interesting thing happens to David. And that's where our story picks up here. 1 Samuel 23, verses 1 through 5. Then they informed David, saying, Behold, the Philistines are fighting against Kilai. Uh, Kila? Kila. We'll go with Kila. And they are plundering the threshing floors. So David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go and attack these Philistines? And the Lord said to David, Go and attack the Philistines and save Kilah. But David's men said to him, Behold, we are fearful here in Judah. How much more then if we go to Kilah against the ranks of the Philistines? So David inquired of the Lord once more. And the Lord answered him and said, Arise, go down to Kilah, for I am going to hand the Philistines over to you. Then David and his men went to Kilah and fought the Philistines, and he drove away their livestock and struck them with a great slaughter. So David saved the inhabitants of Kilah. So a couple things we need to ask ourselves here. Were the concerns of David's men legitimate? Oh, I would say absolutely so. Saul has already slaughtered an entire village just to try to get to David. This is a man on a mission that will not be deterred. He wants David's head. And rest assured, as crazy as, and paranoid as he's been throughout this whole thing, he's going to kill everybody that's with David. It's not like, oh, I took out David. You guys, you're going to be fine. And uh, you just, you know, swear loyalty to me. And, and we just won't worry about the fact that you've been following David. No, David killed priest, God's actual priest, for feeding David. You don't think he's going to kill David's subordinates, his men that he's been running with this whole time that have been walking with him and, and staying away from Saul and trying to duck away from him. Yeah, they're afraid for their lives too. And that's why when David asked God, hey, should we go down to, to Kelah and, and help them out? They seem to have a pretty bad Philistine problem. And God says, yes. The men are like, uh, David, you sure about that? We're here in Judah. This is basically Saul's backyard. Yes, he's a Benjamite, but he's just over the hill here. And we're kind of in the middle of Jerusalem, or not Jerusalem, we're in the middle of Israel right now. And uh, if we go down to this place, 
we may have to deal with Saul. And that's on top of dealing with the Philistines that are going to be there too. And so we, we could wind up between a rock and a hard place. And so it is a very precarious situation. And I think that that's one thing that the brevity of the scripture here probably doesn't emphasize enough. Not to say that I'm questioning the inspiration and how it was put together. Just saying that if you're just sort of casually reading through it, you probably don't pick up on that. But these men are legitimately terrified because we're like, we could wind up trying to do the right thing and helping these guys out against the Philistines and wind up sandwiched between two armies that want to kill us. And that's not a good place to be. And so it's interesting that even though God already said to David, yes, you're supposed to go down there. What does David do? He goes back to God and asks, God, you, you sure about that? You sure you want me to go down to Keilah? Now, David is a man of great faith. And we see that throughout the scripture, even when he screws up, he has a great deal of faith. But I do find it very interesting that he feels the need to ask God again. He, he effectively gets a second opinion, a second opinion from the same God. But he, he basically goes to God in prayer and gets a second opinion on that and says, God, you're absolutely sure I have to go down to Kilah to fight these Philistines. And God says, yes, and if you do it, I will put the Philistines into your hands. You don't have to worry. And so what does David do? He says, all right. And he heads down there and does exactly what God tells him to do. And he rescues the inhabitants of Kalah. So this is really interesting because David is still a soldier of Israel. He's still a servant of God and he's still a soldier of Israel. He was still actually part of Saul's army, weirdly enough, even though he's running from Saul at this point. And so even the fact that his life is in danger from the king of this nation still doesn't deter him from A, doing his duty as a servant of God to listen to what God says, and B, doing his duty as a soldier, as somebody that is a citizen of Israel, even at the risk of his own life in a very severe way from his own commanding officer and father-in-law, does not deter him from doing what God told him to do. And I think that's really interesting because God's reaction to this is basically, David, I know that it's a bad situation, but do what I tell you and I will take care of you. If you do what I tell you, I will de deliver these Philistines into your hand. And that's good enough for David. David hears that and is like, well, God said it must be what we got to do now. And if he said it, it is going to come to pass. He has an amazing amount of faith in God. I mean, this is something that shouldn't come as a surprise to us because we know about Goliath. We know how he reacted to that. We know how he's been throughout this whole episode in this back and forth with Saul. And so when God says it, that's the way it is. That settles it right there. David needs no more explanation than that. Now, to be fair, he did have to go back and ask a second time, but once God reassured him and added the the caveat, and by the way, I'm going to deliver your enemies into your hands, then David's like, all right, let's go. And I think David probably would have gone anyway, but it is interesting that he, that he did a second asking of, of God and what he wanted him to do. But I want to point out a couple of things. First of all, what is David doing right now? He is putting he and his own, li his own life and his men's lives at risk to fulfill his duty to his country. See, David is acting like a king. Saul isn't. Saul is running around the country, killing his own civilians, trying to get at David because he feels as though he is a threat to his throne. You see, if you want a good illustration of why God wanted David and not Saul, that's a pretty good contrast right there. David is not king and acting like it. Saul is king and acting like the only thing that matters is him. He's more important than the country because he's the king. David is saying, no, my country is more important than my safety. And that's the difference in the two of them. David put God first, Israel second, and his own safety third. Saul put himself above all of that. 
And that's why David became a great king, and Saul is remembered for doing some good things, but ultimately is remembered as being the villain in this story. Because he couldn't put his own self aside long enough to see that he had a duty to God and a duty to his country. And whenever it came between doing those things or doing what he wanted, he wound up doing what he wanted. David winds up doing what God asks, even if it's dangerous or even if he doesn't want to. And that's the same kind of faithful attitude that I believe that we need to have. And you'll notice, too, do you remember why God's spirit departed from Saul and why Saul was no longer fit to be king? It was in the episode where he refused to kill the Amalekites and King Agag. And you remember what happened is when Samuel said, well, you didn't do what God told you to do. He says, well, yeah, I kind of did. But see, what happened is the people, they kept rising up and saying, we need to do this. And so I listened to the people. Now, first of all, that's a terrible excuse. But just ignore that for a second. Isn't that exactly what just happened with David? You see, Saul and David had exactly the same choice. Saul's men were saying, you know what, let's not kill all these choice livestock. There's some really nice livestock. Have you seen that back pasture back there? There's some nice looking cattle back there. Let's take those back. Now, whether or not it was actually intended as a sacrifice or that was just Saul trying to save face, I honestly don't know. But either way, he did what the people suggested, not what God told him to do. When David is faced with exactly the same choice, his men are afraid. They don't want to go. They're saying, look, we're already in trouble just being in Judah, and you want us to go to Kilah and fight the Philistines on top of fleeing from this army? And David says, yes, it's what God said to do. We're doing it. That's the difference in those two men. When the people wanted to do their own thing, Saul went along with it. When the people wanted to do their own thing with David, and God said, do something else, David said, oh, we're going to do what God said. Men, if you want to be good fathers to your children, if you want to be good husbands to your wives, if you want to be the leaders that God made you to be, you follow David. And what did David do? He did what God told him to do. It didn't matter what the people said. It didn't matter what the, the circumstances were. When God gave him an order, David carried it out no matter what. And that doesn't mean he was perfect, and it doesn't mean that he didn't make a lot of screw-ups when it came to the rest of his life. But I think this is a very underrated story in the life of David, one that we don't talk about a whole lot. But it is a very bright contrast between the reason that Saul was rejected as a king and David was accepted as a man after God's own heart and somebody that was worthy of the throne of Israel. Because when it came right down to it, David did what God asked him to do, and Saul did. It's just as simple as that. And if we want to be the kind of person that God made us to be, if we want to be the kind of king or the kind of leader in our family or leader in our community or leader in our church or whatever else it is that we're called to do, it's actually real simple. When the world tells us to do one thing and God tells us to do something else, we go with God. We don't go with what the people say. Stay the course, friends. <laughs> If you're watching this because you liked this video, awesome. Be sure to like and subscribe and click that little notification bell. If you're a leftist that's only here to hate watch, hang on before you punch that dislike button. You see, I identify as a Hispanic woman. So if you dislike this video, that's literally violence against me and you are now guilty of a hate crime. Why do you hate beautiful trans people of color like me? What you gonna do now, Woke Brigade?